<laughs> okay. So, uh, how's there? First of all, how's everyone studying going? Are you guys getting confident, nervous? How? What's your general feeling? A lot of details. There are a lot of details. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it's five o'clock, so why don't we begin? Um, so this will just be a kind of a, just a brief overview of the chapters 11 to 20 and the different pharmacists, what you want to know for the exam and kind of like the pharmacist interventions that you can do for, uh, that you can do as well. So, yep, so we're going to do a review of, the, of this. Uh, I asked for, uh, if you have a case or something like that, feel free to submit it to me and we can kind of chat on it uh, during these McKesson touch bases. Um, there will also be the Q&A with Dr. Sue Peterson and the Q&A with myself closer to the exam. Okay, so ch chapter 11, the nutrition chapter, will have a lot of uh, questions on it. It is a major competency of the exam, so read that chapter thoroughly and multiple times if you need it. A lot of concepts from that chapter will show up on the exam, such as glycemic index, how much carbs are in foods, uh, what's the max dose of artificial sweeteners, how to dose for sugar, alcohols, and stuff like that. So make sure you read that chapter carefully. Um, for the amount of carbohydrates in foods, I've got this in my cheats cheat sheet section. It's from the Beyond the Basics. Um, now, you don't have to memorize everything on this poster, uh, but I would try to memorize some of the more common items like uh, a slice of bread, a cup of pasta, apples, juice. There was one time on the exam they asked for ginger snaps. So just try to memorize the more, the more common items. Don't try to memorize this entire thing. Um, so uh, the diabetes plate method is a great way of showing uh, patients how to portion their foods on a plate. And having a visual like this really helps. So I got this plate from a website called Diabetes, which used to sell all sorts of educational tools. Unfortunately, they're not in business anymore. But the makers of OneTouch do have a, they make the OneTouch meters. They do have a bunch of these plates in stock. So if you want one, uh, in your pharmacy, just email me your name and the address where the drug rep can drop it off. And I'll see if a local rep can drop off a plate or two at your place. So uh, there is a limited supply. So if you want one, e email me sooner rather than later. But uh, patients really like having these visual things just to see like, okay, this is how much I should have. And uh, this is how much protein I have. This is how much starch I should have. Um, makes uh, nice for a nice visual. There's also a lot of great resources online. So Diabetes Canada, if you go under uh, nutrition and fitness and then recipes, they have lots of uh, recipes with the, with the info on the nutrition and a video on how to make it as well. And so I've had a bunch of patients uh, give these recipes a try. They say they taste good. It's not like it tastes bland or terrible or anything like that. Um, but uh, the Diabetes Canada does have a great uh, number of recipes that uh, you can direct patients to. Um, another great site is this one. It's Cart to Table or My Health Matters myheartmatters.ca. Uh, this also has a lot of different recipes. You can you can search for like celiac free, gluten free for celiacs and things like that. And so uh, you know, even though we're not, we're even though we're pharmacists and we're not dietitians, we need to be able to review the basics and guide patients to practical resources. Just saying, like eat healthier isn't isn't good enough. So yeah, showing plates, uh, you wanna be practical and show patients resources that they can use. So the next chapter is uh, glycemic management for type one diabetes. So the focus for this chapter should be uh, on the different types of insulin, what uh, insulin regimens are used for people with type one diabetes, how and when screening is different from type two diabetes and how to prevent diabetic ketoacidosis. So for this chapter, you should memorize appendix six. Uh, usually there's a question or two on, you know, when's the peak or when's the duration or when is it, one's onset. So definitely memorize this. I've also got a cheat sheet on like how to calculate 
factor like insulin to carb ratio, insulin sensitivity factor, and things like that. This is just in my cheat sheet section. There used to, when I first wrote the CD exam, there used to be lots of questions on these, but there seems to be less and less of these on the exam now. So, you know, I would study this, but I wouldn't memorize this uh, cheat sheet anymore. It, there doesn't seem to me seem to be as many questions on this. Uh, but this is really useful in just uh, real life practice. There are times when you as the pharmacist need to help a patient out with their insulin calculations. And can you can use this sheet to calculate out their uh, ratios and things like that. Okay, so um, people with also with with glycemic management, uh, people with type 1 diabetes typically experience more hypoglycemia than people with type 2 diabetes. And children are especially vulnerable to this because they can't verbalize that, hey, I'm having a hypoglycemic event. You know, they might just not feel well or feel um, not great. So uh, that can be an obstacle to managing people with type 1 diabetes. And so some useful things to mention to your patients is that if they're using uh, continuous glucose monitoring, uh, say they're using the Libra app, uh, there's, a, there's another app called the Libra LinkUp, which works in conjunction with that app. What it does is that you can, the parent or the family member or whoever can download the app and then they will send a request to the, to the, other, to the other person for permission to look at their sugars. And then that way they can view the other person's sugars whenever they scan. There, there are similar apps for this for Dexcom and Guardian uh, to share data. Um, and the Libra 2 elapse allows for alarms to be sent as well. So if the wife goes, has a low, the husband can be alerted on their Libra link up app. Uh, so this is actually pretty, I think this is something pretty useful to use. And some, and a lot of patients don't know that there's these apps and resources out there uh, that can help them manage their sugars. So this is something, it's a free download. You just link it up to their Libra 2 app and then they can get inf real time information on uh, alerts and things like that. Now this, the Libra LinkUp app doesn't uh, display the more complex information like A1, estimated A1C or ambulatory blood glucose profile, things like that. That's specific for the healthcare professional accounts. So you can sign up for a healthcare professional, professional account through LibraView which is a different app than the Libra LinkUp. This is a more professional account. It has more complex data associated with it. So you just go to LibraView to sign up. Uh, you sign, make sure you're signing up for the professional account. Uh, you enter in your information and all that kind of stuff here. Uh, make sure that this information is all something that uh, you're willing to make public. Don't put your personal email here. Don't put your personal phone here because this state, this information, uh, the patient can see. So you want to put your, like your pharmacist, uh, phone, pharmacy's phone here, because you don't want your patients calling you in the middle of the night with lows and stuff like that. Uh, this information is displayed. Uh, you do have to set up like a password that you have to give to patients. And then once patients enter that password into the LibreView portion of their app, then it automatically uploads their data onto your clinic account. And so what you can see is um, a, a really detailed account of the sugars. So this is one of my real life patients. I can see that, hey, you know, sometimes he's going high in the middle of the night. Um, this guy is actually on Lantus and he's taking it in the morning. So maybe uh, because you can see his sugars are rising overnight, maybe the Lantus is wearing out. Maybe I need to switch him to Traceba or, oh, sorry, to the chat thing. What is your opinion on the Gluco platform? Um, I've, I haven't used that as much. Uh, I think that one's associated with Dexcom. Uh, I think I've used it a couple times. I feel it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, but in terms of which one I would recommend, like the ones that are, like the Libra's, Libra view is specifically made for the Libra app. The Guardian has one specifically for the Guardians. And so those are kind of a little, like a little bit more built in. So, but I think Glucose is a good, is a good platform as well. But I'm not. I'm not as familiar with it. I've seen uh, 
pharmacists using Gluco for uh, uh, as a single platform to be able to integrate uh, Dexcom and uh, Freestyle in the same uh, location, uh, oh, giving okay. way less of uh, punching in many sites to be able to access to patients' data. That's uh, what I thought was the uh, more powerful feature of it. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good. Uh... Yeah, that because my Dexcom password is completely different. I forget it all the time. <laughs> my Libra password is completely different. So actually, that's a that's a good point. I should give that a try. Um, the thing is, is that I think ninety five percent of my patients use Libra, the Libra app. Maybe five percent Dexcom. There is the Guardian one as well for which links with the Medtronic pump. But I don't have. I only have like two patients on that pump. So, um, but that's a good idea. I'll look into that Gluco platform. Thanks. Thanks for that suggestion, Eric. There. I really okay. appreciate that. Okay. So where was I? Oh yeah. So yeah, with this one, like you can see that his sugars are going up in the middle of the night. So he he may need like a higher dose of Lantus. Maybe he needs a little bit of Lantus uh, at bedtime as well, or perhaps Tracebo would be a good option for him. So, you know, with these, you can really, really see his data. You can say, hey, on Saturday, April 9th, what did you eat at, you know, one o'clock? It really, really made your sugar go up. And they'll say, oh, I went to a birthday party or something like that. I guess I should cut down on the cake and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, th I think these are really, really good tools that um, if you do have patients on continuous glucose monitoring that you should really explore. And it's like a free, it like you just sign up, it's, it's a free account. Okay, so chapter 13, which is, which is all the medications. So there's a lot here. Again, this is one, there's lots of questions. So read, read it thoroughly and multiple times if needed. Um, I do have a cheat sheet on, uh, you know, which ones to avoid for hyperglycemia, which ones for bladder cancer, like some, and it's constantly changing too. Like for, for Zika, at first it had a warning about bladder cancer, but subsequent research shows that it doesn't cause, it doesn't have that effect. So for your, um, because that information came up bef before February 1st, 2022, then that means uh, it's, it's on the exam. So that warning was changed in January. So for your exam, there is, uh, you don't have to associate for Zika with bl bladder cancer. And, you know, there's various things for heart failure and so stuff like that. Lots of, unfortunately, there's lots of memorization to, to do. Um, but as pharmacists, it's probably a good idea to know that stuff anyway. So um, good practice for real life. Okay. So figure table one and figure one are probably the most important items on a chapter. So memorize that. Uh, you don't need to memorize the drug studies. You don't need to memorize like Carmelina or whatever and what happened in Carmelina and the types of patients they used and stuff like that. In general, you just need to know class effects. So you need to know that, okay, in all the DPP-4 studies, they showed no cardiac benefit. In all the SGLT-2 studies, they all showed renal benefit. Like you just kind of have to know like the class effects. You don't have to memorize the individual studies or the populations or anything like that. Um, something to uh, renal, uh, the renal dosing figure is tricky to memorize. And I always get, I get asked that question. Um, they had one, in my exam last year, they didn't have any questions on this. Uh, I think in the year prior, in the five years prior, the one, five years ago, I did have a question on this. Unfortunately, it's a tricky question to um, tr tricky figure to memorize. I would memorize metformin because it's so common and then kind of have a general idea of the other classes. Something that might help with that is that, um, you know, some tr pharma companies do create these posters. They are region specific. And this one is really good because it's got the, uh, the a picture of the medications because, you know, patients it's, oh, it's a blue pill that I take, that blue pill you have me on, and then they can pick it out. Um, this one also has the coverage uh, for the provincial formularies, which one's covered. It's region specific. Um, so if you, want, if, you, if you want one, just email me uh, your name and where you want it dropped off. And I can see if the, uh, this one's from Eli Lilly. Uh, I can see if the drug rep is, can drop one off, drop one off for you. It's a nice poster to have just as a reference and uh, just to 
have it somewhere so that patients can say, hey, I'm on this thing. Oh, and like it's covered or, you know, uh, it reduces my weight and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So hypoglycemia. So there's a lot of research on this uh, that shows that patients won't bring it up by themselves. They will think that, oh, they're ashamed of making a mistake or they they feel it's something they did wrong or they think it's not important or they just don't remember to bring it up with the doctor. Uh, this is a Canadian study that shows that in people treated with insulin, both type 1 and type 2, uh, it was a, uh, I believe it was like six-month trial, 95.2% uh, of people with type 1 diabetes experienced an episode of hypoglycemia, and 642 of type 2 diabetes uh, treated with insulin experienced hypoglycemia. So basically most of the pa most of the patients. So it's important for you to uh, kind of bring it up. Uh, you need to talk about it and you want to just approach it in a kind of like a non-judgmental way. You know, hey, a lot of my patients on insulin, uh, sometimes they feel shaky or have these sweats. Do you ever experience that? Or have you, you know, you want to, normalize it, say, hey, did you know that 95% of my other type 1 people with diabetes has had some hypoglycemia lately? Have you had any? Uh, you want to normalize it. You want to talk about it because there's lots of stuff you can do to prevent it. Uh, you know, in the chapter, they talk about ways to prevent it, you know, lower glycemic carbs, having frequent meals, having uh, DEX4 tablets on hand. Uh, you can uh, you know, sell those. You can even order samples of those if you want to get patients involved. Uh, you can order a bunch of Dex4 samples. They come in this little packet. Uh, there's four in one packet. You give it to patients. There's a coupon in there for more. So it's just a way to kind of, you know, uh, uh, bring up the conversation. Um, another thing you can actually talk about now is that there's a nasal glucagon option. So it used to be you have those glucagon kits. Um, in the middle of a low, you had to mix up the diluent, shake it up, inject it in, into the person having a low. And you know, during a panicky situation, you might not remember all those steps. So the, there is a subcutaneous glucagon now, which is much simpler to use. This is covered by most provincial plans now. So uh, it's something that you can you know, bring up in patients that you think have higher risk of hyperglycemia. All right. Uh, so hyperglycemic emergencies, you don't have to memorize those protocols, uh, but you do want to know the difference between diabetic ketoacidosis and hyper, uh, hyperosmolic hyperglycemic state. It's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, weight, the mate, weight management chapter, weight can be a sensitive topic. And so it's really important to ask for permission to discuss. Uh, for a lot of people, they've been struggling with it their entire lives. So you want to approach it gently. Uh, but you also want to be encouraging to patients. Like you want to let them know that even small amounts of weight loss can help with their glycemic control. You know, some people think that, oh, I got to lose like, 50 or 100 pounds before this will help my diabetes. No, that's not the case. Even 5 to 10% five to ten loss in body weight uh, will can significantly, significantly impact your sugars. So just kind of uh, be respectful, ask for permission to discuss their weight, encouraging them that, hey, even just a small amount can really help your sugars is the way you want to go with it. Uh, you do want to know which medications have uh, weight loss as a side effect and which medications have weight gain as a side effect. And if you want more information, there is the Obesity Canada website. Uh, it has a lot of great resources. The five A's, you know, is to ask for permission, assess them, advise them, agree to goals, and assist them with their goals. There's lots and lots of great resources there. Um, there's also even a certified obesity educator designation if you're interested in this topic and you and if you wanted uh, you know additional certifications and stuff like that. Obesity is big is big in Canada. There are a number of medications specifically targeting obesity coming out. Um, you know, like high dose, high dose, uh, high dose uh, 
Sixend is the once daily Victoza. Uh, Ozempic. There's a high dose Ozempic coming out that's specifically targeting obesity. Uh, there's various combination drugs coming in, out that uh, target obesity. Contrave is another one. I am. It, I've never been able to get a patient on it because of coverage issues or side effect issues. There's Xenical, which I rarely have seen because of the all the GI side effects with it. But I think in the future, you'll see more and more obesity drugs. And so becoming familiar with it would be great for your practice. Okay, the mental health chapter. So I think this chapter has gotten a lot more important since COVID. You know, uh, in my practice, uh, maybe once a year, there'd be a person crying in my office because they got the diagnosis of diabetes and, you know, they watch their grandmother or mother really struggle with it and, and uh, go on insulin and, str and struggle with that. But this past winter, I think there was a person crying in my office like at least once a week. It was crazy. And so uh, people are feeling isolated. They're anxious. They're getting depressed about it. And I think even in the pharmacy setting, there's a lot that we can do about it. Uh, so, you know, one is that you want to normalize it, you know, talk about, hey, I've had a lot of other patients really struggle with their mental health, you know, for if you can personalize it a little bit, like, you know, for me, I haven't seen my friend or my grandmother for a long time. And it, sometimes I feel down about it. Have you felt similar feelings? Uh, you want to normalize it, you want to talk about it, you know, discuss you want to say that, hey, you've got lots of other patients who come forward and say, hey, it's been really tough with this or that. And, you know, just say it's been common since COVID and ask how's your mental health doing. So you want to be aware of the counseling resources in your area. Like in Alberta, there's specific uh, uh, places where people can get free counseling through social work or whatever. So you want to know what resources are available in your neck of the woods. But some national ones are the Canada Mental Health Association, the Canada Suicide Prevention Service, there's a kids helpline as well. And um, there's this Wellness Together Canada, which was specifically made uh, for COVID. It's got a bunch of uh, mental health resources there. You can just direct patients to it and, you know, uh, give, give it a kind of look at it yourself and say, hey, on this website, I found this really useful. Why don't you give it a try as well? Yeah. With the isolation piece, uh, there is this website, meetupgroup.com. Uh, you know, you can find Isolation is a bit is a big is a big problem, and on this you can find lots of different groups to invite other people to. Um, you know, if there's groups for everything, like as you can see, there's hikers, nature lovers, there's Dungeons and Dragons lovers, like there's all sorts of groups. So if people are feeling isolated and they've lost connection with all their friends, I haven't talked to my friends in two years. I don't know what to say to them. Try giving this uh, give this website a try try look for a common interest and then go from there. Okay, so for the chapter 19, the in vaccinations, just read it once and just review my highlighted sections. It's not that important. Uh, same thing with the diabetes and transplantation one. Just, just read it once and review my highlighted sections. Okay, so in conclusion, um, in conclusion, there are, again, several impactful interventions that you can do for your patients in the pharmacy, pharmacy setting. I truly, truly believe that, that we can make a, quite, a big in, quite a big impact for our patients. Uh, remember that, as you know, the exam is five weeks away. I'll be setting up a, uh, probably in the middle of May, uh, where we'll just do our next touch base. We'll just really, really briefly review chapters 21 to 38 and go from there. The question and answer session with Dr. Sue Peterson is scheduled for May 11th, uh, but you have to send me your questions by May 4th uh, so that Dr. Peterson likes to have those questions ahead of time so that she can just prepare. Typically, she doesn't answer questions on pedi pediatrics and pregnancy since she's a general endocrinologist and she doesn't have expertise in that area. Uh, but yeah, send me those questions. Uh, by May 4th and I'll get those into her. My Q&A is a lot more informal. You don't have to send me questions or anything like that. It's just a day before the exam if you're writing on Thursday. 
uh, it's just on the Wednesday. So you can just drop in, uh, ask your questions, just, just an informal way to, you know, answer any last minute questions you have and just get yourself calm and ready for the exam. Yeah, and that's the end of the touch base for today.